everybody, Tanya from Shooting Star SVG back, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to create halftone vector portraits in Inkscape. So if this is your first time here, go ahead and click on like and subscribe below as that does keep me motivated to continue making these videos so that way you can grow your business and change your life. And if you haven't already, head on over to the Facebook group where we are creating a community of like-minded individuals looking to grow their semi-passive income with digital downloads. I've been kind of racking my brain on different techniques I can show you all in Inkscape that are super cool. Um, and when I was like searching for trends the other day, I noticed that these halftone vectors were becoming like... I don't know. A lot of people were talking about them. So it's a really cool idea for a t-shirt, especially if you're doing like sublimation. But the way that we do this is utilizing circles and their vectors. So you can change the colors. You can really get super detailed with these and put them on shirts. And then, you know, from close up, it, it's like that full on Monet thing. You know, it looks like a bunch of dots. And then when you stand back, you can actually see like a freaking picture. So it's super cool. I uh, wanted to walk you guys through how to do this with a picture that I have and hopefully you'll get something out of it. So let's head over to the computer screen. We'll get started. So I have Inkscape open. Uh, you can see this cute picture of my son in the tubby when he was, oh God, I have no idea. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to delete this layer that I have on here because I'm not sure why it's there. All right. So we got my kid here. And what we're gonna do is you wanna turn whatever photo you have to grayscale. So, okay, so to make this grayscale, you're gonna go to filters, color, grayscale, all right? Uh, make sure you click on the live preview. If I can actually select the picture and do that, let's try that again. Filters, color, grayscale. Make sure you have live preview selected. And you just want to make sure you get this grayscale tone. These default settings should be just fine. Go ahead and click apply. You can close out of that window. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our circle and you're going to hold down control and you're going to make a circle. Now, this is where it gets a little bit difficult because the bigger your circle, the less detail that it's going to have. Okay. But oops, I forgot one step. I'm sorry. Now that we have our photo grayscaled, you're going to go to layer, add layer. Okay, and you're going to want to make sure that it's above current and click add. Um, you can go ahead and open up your layers panel by hitting shift control L or just clicking on the layers and you'll see these two here. So if I go ahead and do that, you'll see that uh, he goes away. But we want to be working on layer two. This is where we're actually going to put our, um, our circle. Okay, so you're going to want to hold down control and draw out your circle on layer two. Now, keep in mind, the bigger the circle, the less the detail. And I'll show you this in just a few minutes. So because this is such a good, a big picture, what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in here um, to the corner because we're going to get this aligned in the corner. Uh, select the circle, select the image, go to your alignment panel and make sure that you have it on last selected and then just align that to the top corner. OK, I'm actually going to make this smaller. So holding down control, I'm just going to go ahead and bring this down way, way down. OK, this is going to give me some more detail. So you could probably barely see it when you zoom out, depending on how big your photograph is. OK, now with the circle selected, what you're going to do is you're going to go to edit and you're going to go to clone and you're going to click on create tile clones. And that's going to open this up right on the top here. You're going to want to click on trace. You want to make sure that it says trace the drawing under the clone sprayed items. Um, you're going to click on color. You want to make sure presence and size is selected. And then for the width and the height, you want to make sure that it is set up to whatever the width and the height of your photo is. So you want to click on that. Um, mine's 42 by 56 inches. So you can see here I have 42 by 56 inches. OK, um, and then make sure you have your circle selected and then you're just going to click on create. And it'll take a minute here, especially if there's a lot of detail. So we'll just be patient. OK, so we have all of our little circles here. Um, and right now you're just like, oh, this doesn't look like a freaking picture at all. But here's the thing. Go back to your layers and you're just going to hide that bottom layer with the photo. And you can actually see little baby Callum here. Now, when you really zoom out, it looks like the picture. And then when you zoom in, obviously, it looks like a bunch of dots. So um, I apologize because I do have my document bounding um, here. What you're going to want to do is you're going to take this clone 
away. And that's not what I ended up doing. I'm going to bring that all the way down. And you're going to take this clone away. That's our original circle. And you're just going to make sure that you break the clone. So you can do that by hitting Shift Alt D or just clicking on this icon in the top bar. Because if you were to change the color of this now, um, let me just back that up. So if I was to change the color of this now, it's going to change the color of all the dots. Same thing if I resize it because they're all cloned together. So, I mean, if you wanted to go for like a different color, um, you could go ahead and do that. But if you wanted to come in and really get detailed and like kind of colorize certain dots a certain way to make it look more realistic, you could do that. Obviously, the more dots you have, the more time this is going to take. Uh, and similarly, you know, you can go in and delete dots if you just wanted to say isolate uh, a certain portion of the photo as well. Um, but I just wanted to go over this because it's a really cool, it's a cool effect, right? Like, it's not something that I've ever thought to do before. And then I was like, you know what, I can do this. I can do this. So I went ahead and just looked up some stuff so I could try to teach you guys um, how to do this. So again, you can use virtually any photograph. You just want to make sure that you grayscale it, create another layer on top with the circle, um, and then go from there. So I'm just going to back out. I'm going to show you what this looks like with a uh, larger circle. Okay, so I'm actually just going to come in and I'm going to increase the size here of this. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. I'll go back, select to layer two, and I'm just going to increase the size of this. Now, you can see that it's still kind of small on the canvas, but if you go back to the, the clone tiles and you click on create, um, you're going to have much bigger circles. And so when you remove that bottom layer, you can still kind of see what's going on, but it's just not as detailed as the smaller circles were. So really at that point, it's just personal preference, okay, as far as how big uh, you create the circle. And you can do this with other things. I mean, you don't have to do it with just the circle shape. You could do it with hearts. You could do it with anything. Um, it's just the circles kind of give you that impressional, impressionist kind of like dot art that you may have seen out there. So that's how you do the halftone vectors. You can definitely uh, change colors. You can make it as less or more detailed as you might want. And it could be a cute little gift to get to some, get for somebody to put on a shirt or some sort of home decor. So again, these little circles are all vector. Hopefully you all got something out of this. If you have any questions or comments about the process, if you, please drop a comment in the comments box below or head on over to the Facebook group where we can chat about it. Um, and as always, if you got something out of this video, please go ahead and click on like and subscribe below as that does keep you motivated to continue making these videos so that way you can grow your business and change your life. And if you're interested in more tips and tricks on Inkscape, a lot of these videos I will put in the Inkscape course themselves where you can learn how to create SVGs and sell those for a semi-passive income profit. Um, that's all I got for you guys. I will catch you on the next video. Shooting Star SVG, signing out.